Progress. Recording is in progress. Cool. Oh. My picture is ridiculous. It's what my clients say for that. Put my video on. Bring it on now. What? Come on. So you use this for uh, that's a good shirt, by the way. Good shirt. Good stubby. Uh, yep. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah. So no, with, with um with COVID, I use Zoom pretty much all day, every day. Um, it's been great. I haven't had to wear trousers in about two years. Uh, which so is are, you, one are you working from home or are you going to the office still? So we're meant to go to the office one day a week, but I, I haven't really been in. I've been in twice in the last three months because uh, I've got a really good setup at home. Do, does someone check in, up on you or do you just do whatever? No. I just do my thing. I do my thing. As long as the money keeps churning in, um, and the work keeps going out. That's key, right? So, uh, nice. yeah. Nice. Well, it looks like yeah. Singapore's doing some good things around the COVID. Is that accurate? The it's been word, locked down. It's, it's also, been locked down. It's, it's, I, I try not to talk about it because it's. You, you log on to every news site and, you know, five, five cases confirmed today. There's less than 5 million people here. The government controls things really tightly. It's a very compliant place. So if, if you go outside without a mask, you've got to pay a $450 fine, Aussie dollars. Yeah. So um, it, it, you don't mess around. You know, if, if you're a foreigner and you're out uh, breaking and following the laws, you'll get deported. Yeah, right. Okay. Anyway, Fine. this isn't about me. This is about you. Well, it can be whatever you want. I'm I'm a little bit nervous about this week. This is my first. This is my first time as a guest on a podcast. Yeah, I've been a guest many times. No, I haven't. I've been a host. Um, you know, I've actually asked around to a few of your mates a few different ideas, uh, where to go with this, what to get out of it. You know, I've known your rugby career. Obviously, that's where Wandering Bear to me has sprouted out of, but. How would you describe your rugby career in your own words? You go straight into that. Yeah. Um, underachieving. What do you mean? Um, mate, not, not what I know now as a coach. I would have fucking hated coaching me. Absolutely hated it. Because you go... Like, you, you know that I'm fairly objective about, not objective, I'm probably a bit, a bit hard on myself, but I'm reasonably honest with my ability and, you know, my downsides. And, like, if, if I looked at it objectively, I'd go, oh, this, this guy could play a little bit. He had a little bit of talent, but he just he wasn't willing to work. He wasn't dedicated consistently. He didn't... He wasn't doing what he could to make the most of his potential, and and like like I, there were times in my career I did train hard, but it was only times. And tell me, tell me about one of those times. It's probably last year. Probably last year with Todd as a coach. Um, fuck, mate, we worked so fucking hard, dude. Really fucking hard. You, you, you know, you're going like six to eight k's a session, reasonably high speed running. Even, you know, my my running wasn't fast, but it was reason. It was fast for me. What what what, what are you talking? To? You, you're roughly in the twenty three to twenty five k zone, quite consistently. No, fuck, I didn't even notice. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you, but you, you're roughly getting six to eight k's a session three to four times a week man i got fucking fit and you know then i had a couple of concussions so it, it kind of you know so yeah in, in my entire career i probably trained hard for over the whole career maybe a year if i'm being honest so look uh, underachieved uh i had a lot of fun Probably not quite as much fun as you had, but I I certainly enjoyed myself. I played with some very good players. I've I've got some great friends out of it. I've seen the world, um, but I didn't. I don't think I made the most of my ability. Does Does so, that answer your question? Yeah, look, I I would totally agree with you. I don't think you did either. 
Um, no, I still, but, but, I still but, remember the day. Yeah, go. No, but but if if I'm if I'm honest with myself, like you know, Dan Dan Palmer's a good mate of mine, and I was living with him when he was going through the academy system, and I yep. and you know, uh, Tetra Faulkner's a friend of mine, John Luge is a friend of mine, and I'm looking at these guys and I'm seeing what they're doing. So I had a I had a, a front row seat to see what was required to make it at the next level, and mm-hmm. I still wasn't doing it. Does, does that make enough. sense? Well, that's right. Yeah. So no. I knew what was required, but I wasn't willing to put in the work. So the only answer that I could come up with is that I just didn't want it enough, even though I thought I wanted it. Yeah, look, I, I think I've always known that um, about your career. But, you know, that leads me into my next point. You said, you know, you live with Dan and the, you were around early on. Tell me what Southern Districts means to you and how you actually ended up there. A bit about the early days. Because I, I remember a few things vaguely. Um, so we didn't win a game for my... So I, I came down in 20, 2007 to play Colts because I I came through the CHS and New South Wales schoolboy system with Luke Smart, you know, Michael Wattini, Rob Horn, um, you know, Palms, Andrew Barrett, guys like that. And, you know, I was obviously friends with Palms before that, but going through the schoolboy stuff, I was really good mates with the Southern Districts boys. And I, I for whatever reason, and, you know, it's probably, uh, probably in hindsight, it's because they're all as crazy as you and me. I just gravitated to the area and the place. And, and what actually got me down was, I was staying with Palms. We were about to play. We had a crazy week. So we played Japan for CHS and then we were going to go to Canberra the following week to play Tonga. And and sort of in the... So I just stayed at Palms Place in Wollongong. So in the meantime, he was playing Colts that year uh, in our last year at school. So I got invited to the Colts piss up at the Royal Motor Yacht Club. And, and, you know, probably says a lot, but (laughs) that's what sort of got me there and so we came to Colts good bunch of boys uh I think we came ninth you know pretty average year and then I I've I can't remember why I did it but I I started playing grade a year early I think it was because I might have had the opportunity to play first grade or I can't I can't remember exactly why but we didn't win a game for two years Sorry, we won one game in two years, one game in two years, yeah. and it was against Manly at Manly. And the only reason I remember that game is because it's one of the rare occasions in my career that I got man the match. One of the very rare occasions. And we partied afterwards like we'd won the shoot shield. And, you know, so I had a couple, I had a couple of opportunities to leave, but for some reason, I just stayed. I, I think, you know, I'd work, my friends were there. And then, and then all of a sudden, we, we had this Ford pack that was, you know, nearly all of them played for the Wallabies. And I was in second grade, a little bit of first grade when they were on super rugby duty. And, you know, we, we came, I think we made the finals in 2010, 2009. I might be wrong. But... We then went on a bit of a run where we consistently made the finals. Mm. And, and, you know, the thing that I'm probably the most proud of in my rugby career is that I didn't leave and that I was there from the bad times to the good times. And, you know, I remember standing, playing Sydney Uni at Southern Districts in a fight, in a semi-final and, I'm standing there talking to Liam Dwyer, who's who's actually older than me, but it's been around forever as well. And we both looked at each other and said, "Can you fucking believe where from where this place came from to where we are now?" And mate, I couldn't, I couldn't. You just couldn't put it to work. You couldn't. I can't. I, I'm stuttering because I've had three beers already, but it's okay. I've but, had about five. No. <laughs> It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday after all. It locked but, down. You don't know this. The day. I was trying to go two weeks without drinking piss, and I've I managed. Ken McCoy was at the gym. He's like, "You want to have a beer?" So I managed to make it two days. 
So I'd say <laughs> last, 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 um, last Thursday night, I went downstairs. I live above about 10 pubs and I had um, seven pints of Asahi tip me right over the edge. So I came up thinking it would be a good idea to go for a skateboard. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put on, um, I put on, I put on my Crocs cause you know, best skating shoes, Crocs. 100%. I find putting socks and shoes. I, I hate shoes. Um, so it's straight on the board. Step, step, face plant, broke my phone. <laughs> um, I'd love to have seen but, it okay. quietly. I, I, I had enough, I had enough sort of brain power to work out. Okay, that's probably the end of that for the day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we digress. Um, so South, oh, yeah, okay. So a big point for me, there's two things there. What is the change? that happened during that time to get it from, you know, back to back to back losses. I remember that period. I think it was off in the Gold Coast somewhere to winning ways. The culture is obviously a big part, but what, what changed? What clicked? Um, oh, a few things. Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's a good question. This is actually more serious than I thought you were going to be. Um, for now. <laughs> I think what happened is the guys that I came through with grew up and we started yeah. to become, you know, genuine first graders and, and guys that, you know, when I first started playing first grade, none of us were ready for first grade. Probably Palms, Palms was definitely. Um, Michael wasn't. And I, I reckon that was probably one of the reasons he, he stopped playing is because he went there too early. But I definitely wasn't ready. Uh, Smarty wasn't ready, um, guys like that. So I yep. think that's I think that's part of it. But I think what they did as well is we actually so no one got paid for the first couple of years, and then what they did is they mm. gradually started to. They had a couple of big investors who spent a lot of money getting uh, recruits to the club, and you know just yep. as you've seen in any team you've been in, there's for every. Um, good recruit there's five very average recruits and yeah. I think during that time the recruitment was f- fantastic uh, in terms of the quality of players and the quality of people um, just by I don't know if you, you'd think it was by design but from kind of from what I've seen now it's a, li- a little bit of luck as well and you had these guys that came in who were good rugby players, good people, used to winning, and then you had the combination of the, the young guys uh, like myself coming through who are sort of growing in to become actual first graders. And I think there's that. And, you know, the comps changed a bit. The comps changed a bit over the last couple of years. So ever since North, ever since North won it and they've had that ridiculous... Uh, not ridiculous, but the TV exposure became significant and yeah. it was almost like professional rugby was struggling. So let's throw all of our support behind the semi-pro or the amateur game. So all the all the interest in the game has become not huge, but a lot bigger. The, the, the competition now is for all effects and purposes professional without the money, even though some teams do get paid well. But what we did well at that time is... You know, I've got this saying that there's two ways to bond as a team. It's the the beers and the Broncos, you know, the 1.2 test. And Mm -hmm. we probably didn't do enough for the Broncos back then, which is probably why we didn't win a title. Um, But we did a good amount of the beers. And I think that went a long way to... You you don't want to say the beers is one of the reasons we succeeded, but it felt like it. If that makes it's sense, the, it's the reason I succeeded. <laughs> but yeah, but if you, carry on. I think the I think the combination that that you have to get right is the beers and the Broncos, because if you if you get a good mix of both, you know the the sorry the I, I, just 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 interject. Yes, beers and Broncos. But what you're saying is on the field, off the field, standard setting. So off the field, yes, you have your beers and you have your fun. But when you're training and when you're putting in your work for the game, there's a, an expected standard that is set culturally across the group 
yeah. to raise your standard. And if you you don't accept mediocrity, mediocrity is breaks me. Where and, people just accept the lower level. Yeah, because and that's that's why the reason we didn't win anything is because we didn't, in my opinion, we didn't have the standards off field. Um, it, sorry, we didn't have the standards around the training and, and that side of the things, but we were all good rugby players and we all enjoyed each other's company. Um, and for yeah. me, that was a big part of the success. To, to actually turn that into winning titles, I think you've got you to work a lot harder than we did. Um, anyone that's listening to this may or may not disagree with me. This is only my opinion. Sure but like now, yeah, carry on. like now, mate, the South work so fucking hard, dude, honestly. Mm. They they work so hard. The the program's professional. The the coaching's good, probably with the exception of myself. Um, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, you know, and I think I, I think it's the combination of both is how you win is how you win. Um, I don't I don't agree with coaches that just say it's all f you know off it's all training or nutrition all that sort of stuff. I think in a rugby team you have got to have a little bit of both. Guys, yeah. guys that end up playing good level of rugby have a slight craziness to them, and I, th- I think you got to have that. You got to have that encouraged a little bit. Um, yeah, I have no idea if I've answered your question or not. Um, I don't know either. Um, <laughs> geez, your beard looks nice, by the way. It's good. First time I've groomed it in about seven, eight weeks. Fucking why? Well, you wasted that. your money just quite. <laughs> no, I wish I didn't have to. Um, what makes a good coach? You, you've, uh, sorry, you, you've seen coaches all over the world. You've experienced top level, country level, whatever. You know what makes a good coach? What what is it that? What you know, makes me a coach? No, or what, what makes, makes me, what, what makes a good what makes a good coach? Okay, what well, do you see as the defining characteristic of a good coach? Mate, that's that's a fucking good question. Because if if you ask me whether I am a coach, I would say that I'm not yet. Uh, I'm I'm very much on the path of learning it. Um, I don't know if you ever fully master it, to be honest with you, uh, because it's it's like anything in life. The the more you, well, I don't know if it's like anything in life. That's a very. I feel like the more you learn. The, the more you realise you don't actually know anything um, when it mm-hmm. comes to coaching and, and like business, bro. The, the stuff I'm learning about business every day, I'm like, fuck, I really have no idea about anything. Well, what, makes a good, what makes a good coach? I think, I think you've got to have the ability to speak to a variety of human beings in their language. I think you've got to help. Yeah, but like yeah. how I would talk to you might be different to how someone would talk to me. And I think yeah. a coach has to work that out. Um, I think you've got to you've got to constantly be willing to learn. I think you've got to you've got to have an ability to share a vision and get everyone on the same page. Yeah, which is fucking hard. Which is hard in any walk of life. Getting, you know, what do you have in a rugby team? Fifteen to a hundred people. If you're in a club. Uh, you've got to get all these people on the same page, manage egos, expectations, characters, different learning styles, different expectations, yeah. abilities, and you've got to manage all that but have, this, have the eye on the prize at the end of the day, which is the success of the team or the club or, the, or whatever. So I think, yeah. there's that, that, I think you've obviously got to have a good knowledge of whatever sport you're in. Um, that goes without yeah. saying. That helps. And, and something I've seen is you've got to, you've got to, what's really critical is having good people around you, um, yeah. people, to, people to help you, um, people to teach you, um, people to make sure to check you if you're going off track. Yep. Um, and, and, like, I have no idea if this is the right attitude or not, but, well, okay, Simon Cron said something similar to me. He's, he's gone... Um, I hate it when I say when I hate it when I hear coaches say, but I told him not to do that. And it's it's always got to be I didn't if that's what's happening. I didn't coach it well enough, and always looking at yourself. Um, yep. And I, I think if if someone doesn't understand what you're saying, that's not on them. It's on you. 
And you've got to have the ability to look at yourself and go, oh, how, how can I say this better? And I think that's that's a real key to coaching. But then, but then again, mate, oh, I, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning. You know, you and I have both had some good coaches and we've had our, yeah. our fair, fair share of bad coaches. And all, all I'm trying to do at the moment is, is look at everything around me, all the good people I get to talk to, all the people I get to watch, everyone that's teaching me and that I get to teach. And I go, what works, what doesn't? And then just soak in all the good, soak in all the bad and use what I think is good. That's, really, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Yeah. And, and that's not just in rugby, that's in business, life, everything, right? I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying, mate. It's, look, you've you probably noticed I've been trying to smash the social media uh, side of things lately. And I've, 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 what I do is I, I kind of look at the people that I would like to become and go, well, what are they doing? And then go, all right, let's try this. And it doesn't, I, I've no idea if it's working or not, mate. Um, but I'm going to try and adjust and adjust and adjust. And I, I think something, mate, you yeah. fucking got me. I've got just the right amount of beers in me just to keep dribbling absolute shit. But That's something, <laughs> but something I've learned lately and something I've really been looking at is failure. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people get anxious about failure and, and you know, you know, failure's almost seen as a bad part of it instead of going, okay, that failed. Why? How can I do it better? And just use it as a learning experience. And like I've made some big fuck ups as a coach already. And I, I look at it and go, oh, okay. And, and, and as a human, uh, sorry. Um, but, <laughs> well, that but, goes without saying. You know you're not, you're not wrong. So the majority, is, I see people as not wanting to go out of their comfort zone, not willing to try, risk it all, go after it. You know, it, it, it context I would explain to you. In martial arts, jiu-jitsu, how many people would put their hand up and go, let the guy pass to back or side control and put yourself in shit and work your way out of it? Yeah. Learn how to fail so once you've really been in that shit, you know what it takes to get the fuck out of it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think ego plays a huge part to me. Um, you know, people aren't willing to let their ego take the hit, so they sit within themselves. And you know, I think for you, you know, that leads to my next question, but you, you stepping out from your previous job is going, fuck it, let's go. So, you know, what was that job you were doing again? The fucking what, the what have, scumbag thing. What do you what, what do you have to bring it up? What you? <laughs> you can blame um, you can you can blame Pony for that one. No, uh, I'm not gonna I'll, like I don't want, I'm not I won't mention the play. So uh, no, yeah. no. But so you, you quit you quit it. So how about we? That's done. Yeah. What is wandering bear? You know, obviously, this phenomenon has taken off like a bat out of hell. I am sure your listeners want to know who is Wandering Bear, what is Wandering Bear stand for, and where is Wandering Bear going in all of this? Now, you, you might have to take over uh, these podcasts because you're doing you're doing a good job, and you know, um, I think everyone's probably going to be quite surprised when they hear that you can actually hold a sentence together. Um, but, <laughs> but, but, so what is Wonder Bear? So, um, so how it all started is I posted my own highlights reel because I've always liked kind of tinkering around with videos. <laughs> Sorry, your no, highlights I'll, reel. I know, I'll, exp I'll explain <laughs> I'll it, I'll explain it. <laughs> I love tinkering, tinkering around with uh, videos and all that sort of stuff. So I thought, you know what, I'll make my own highlights reel. And it was like four minutes, four minutes, just absolute shit. Like the same three good tackles that I've made, just recycled, you know, slowed down, start, middle, back. You know, I had a couple of decent scrums. I could do that reasonably well. Uh, slowed yep. them down so it, so it lasted longer. But I didn't even zoom in on it, so I didn't fill the screen. So I posted it on I posted it on Facebook and I've gone, hey, if anyone wants a highlight video, let me know. And um, an agent... Saw that, saw that and messaged me and goes, oh, how much do you charge? And I've gone, so I said something which I now know is way too fucking cheap. 
And he goes, all right, I've got 10 guys for you and sent them through to me. And I'm going, oh, okay. And then so within the last two, three years, I've probably done six or 700 highlight reels um, for all levels of rugby, but, you know, 20, 27 um, international, no, I've done more than 27 internationals, but 27 countries represented. Um, I've done All Blacks, South Africans, England, Italy, all of them. And the name sort of came from the fact that I always wanted to, I got called Bear as a kid, and I've always wanted to have a job where I could just be anywhere and do whatever I fucking wanted. And I kind of had that. Yep. And yep. now I'm trying to, you know, I can see Kira. Hello, Kira. Kira she can't hear she's getting, she's she can't she's getting, getting, she's getting you know, <laughs> Like a good wife, Kate. Kate, listen, like a good wife. Um, Kate, Kate, listen. Kate. She's not, she can't Sorry, hear carry on. She can't hear you, thank God. Yeah, right? not yet, but she, she will. And um, what are we talking about? So I'm currently trying to work out what I want this to be. So... When the second lockdown ha happened in the UK, I thought, uh, you, you know, I've wanted to do a podcast for a long time. I have been a pussy for, for sure, a huge, sure. pussy for a huge amount of years. So I, I just decided to do it during the lockdown. Uh, message to Tafu Pilota now. Um, shitting myself, Jed Holloway, shitting myself, even though he's a good friend of mine. And for some reason, they both said yes. And... You know, since then, I've done an all-black captain, a Wallaby captain, the English Premiership winning coach of the year. And now what I'm trying to do, bro, is work out where this thing's going to go. Um, and I've got some ideas. Uh, we won't talk about them here because I'd rather uh, – we can talk about it off, but I'd rather keep it uh, a little quiet at the moment. But I kind of know the direction I want to take this in. And Good. Uh, it's, it's around uh, – you know, I, I'm on, I'm on this, I'm on this journey to learning things and trying to. So I never made the most of my potential as a rugby player, and and that was probably the only regret I had. But I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can make the most of my potential as a coach, and you know, hopefully as a human. But who knows about that? And then try and take people on that journey and see if I can help yeah. people. Um, yep. So I got I got some ideas about where this is going to go, and it's going to be a lot of work. You you might have to help me, um, but yeah, let's see where it, let's. For now, what Wandering Bear is is, is I'm share, trying to share insights into what it takes to be involved in elite sport, and some of the personalities involved, and, and ultimately tell stories. That that's really what this is about. Is you know, I, I spoke to Benny Vola Vola, who, who plays for Fiji, and, you know, great podcast. He's a friend of mine. And, you know, his family were fucking delighted by it because he, he got to share his story uh, on a platform. And, you know, it's not a big platform yet. I hope it will be one day. Um, I don't hope. I know it will be. And, yeah, so it's, it's helping people, telling stories and... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, bro. What 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 are your values? Values, fucking hell. In what regard? Life. What's important to you? Um. Okay. Okay. So let's take a step back. What gets you out of bed in the morning? And don't say Kate's farts. No, oh, it's probably my probably my alarm clock. Um, no, maybe. Oh. So I, I feel like my life has been a constant battle between knowing that you don't live forever, and it was saving for a rainy day, and knowing that you don't live forever. So I'm oh, going. Yeah. yeah, and I know you're the same, and Dad's the same, and Mum's the same, and you know. So I want to live. I want to make, I'm very aware that I'm going to die and I want to make the most of my time on this earth now. Um, but it's kind of the battle between, oh, save, you know, saving to do this or saving to do that or, you know, fuck it, I'm going to go have beers with Pony, <laughs> you know, go on an adventure. Beers first, life. Yeah, no, 100%. Well, that, um, that's, been, that's been my battle my entire life. Like you go, well, yeah. 
you, do you know what I mean? It's it's so that's the thing that kind of gets me in bed. Um, why why I want to work for myself and something that I value is time, um, and how to live, how to choose my time, and how how I want to live my life. Like I I I can't stand the thought of someone. Um, you know, having to ask someone whether I can go to the doctor or not or whether I can go do a shit or whether I can have the day off to go and fucking MC a fucking conference like I did the other day. Like, so if, if, if anyone asks valued listeners, um, it's 12 past 6 p.m. here in Singapore. I'm not drinking during work hours. <laughs> well, I definitely do drink during work hours. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? Um, you know, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And the one thing I've noticed too, um, you know, I've put a lot of things off to do after making a bit more cash, blah, blah, blah. And now I can't fucking do any of them. And I'm sort of, I'm sitting back going, fuck, as soon as we can do it, boo, on that plane, I'm out of here. Well, mate, you got to like, you know, if if you're not enjoying what you're doing and you don't have to do it, then what the fuck are you doing? Like, you know, if, I was I was, asked, if I was asked 10 years ago, would you be sitting in Singapore working a, a field called financial compliance when I was removing furniture on the Gold Coast? Oh, it's, are you, it's unbelievable. Are you, it's unbelievable. Are you snorting drugs. Um, you know, it, it's... But... I said yes, and I'm sitting here today. So uh, less about me, more about you. Next question. No, no, mate. It could be just a conversation about you as well. But but the thing that the thing no, that I'm I, I'm a former international superstar rugby player. You never talk about my highlights. Hasn't made your latest fucking chain yet. And mate. you gave up after 20 minutes because there were fucking shitloads of them. Well, you know why I gave up is because I don't like working for free. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> not anymore anyway <laughs> sorry tell me about your Italian jo- tell me about your Italian job <laughs> okay uh, so yeah all right let's go into it so for whatever reason uh, Italy has been a place I always wanted to live and it was always a, the place I wanted to play rugby it was probably the only thing I really wanted if I'm really honest, it was something that I really wanted out of my career, and it was probably the yeah. You're right, and it's probably I turn, the biggest. I turned turn my turned my fucking emails on again. It was fucking yeah. Anyway, carry on. It was probably the biggest goal, probably the biggest goal of mine, and you know somehow an opportunity came up, and I ended up going, and you know it was just it was a fucking disaster. Um, I. I've since found out that a lot of people actually struggle playing overseas. Um, change of environment, change of culture, the language barrier. And I, I, I went over, I was a little injured, I wasn't healthy, I didn't train very hard. Um, and I played terribly. And, you know, I was one of about six people getting paid properly at the club. And I, I had a concussion one day and the guy who was on the bench behind me who now plays tight head prof for Italy who's a fucking freak and a good dude and he's awesome uh, just way he's a lot I think his name is he got man of the match in the only game the club won all year um, so obviously uh, he was he was the man and so the team meeting they had a team meeting every Monday and it's Monday night, they did like a review type thing. The whole thing's in Italian. You have to sit and pretend like you care, uh, even though you don't understand a single word they're saying. And then at the end of it, the general manager pulls me aside and says, uh, Duncan, uh, you talk to me. And like I noticed that his, his English was never good, but you could always have a chat to him. And his, um, his English was all of a sudden terrible. And he's handed me, he's handed me a note, which was Google translated, and for anyone that's ever used Google Translate, um, <laughs> it's all over the shop because English is English and Italian have different structures of you know, Spanish, French. And it was Duncan, uh, you play bad. Uh, we no want you no more. Uh, terminate contract. We must. And and that was it. And 
I refused to leave the apartment until they paid me my termination fee. And then I ended up going on a two month bender around Europe. <laughs> that leads me into another question. Tell me about your six month bender around Hong Kong. Um, I didn't actually go too hard that time. Yeah, that was piss poor effort on your part. Well, it was more financial. It was more financial than anything. My my brother on the ground, you know, did all he could to not help me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, playing playing Hong Kong. Well, like well, one of, well, another well, one of the well. things I always wanted to do in my career was play rugby with you. Um, yeah, and you know, obviously being born in Hong Kong, you you can count as a local player, but. Yeah, go, going over, I, I I'd come off I'd come off the best season of my life. Uh, we we'd made the Shoot Shield Grand Final. I played eighty minutes every game. Then I then we had the first NRC. I played nearly every game but one. And then so I was that's in the from, final. That was for, that's for Melbourne, so, right? No, New South Wales country. country. And it was it was the only year of my career where I actually played where I would have said I played well consistently and killed it. And then um, I came to Hong Kong, mate. Played with you, and and to be honest with you, I was I was good when I got there. But pretty pretty soon after the the sort of toll of the season, I the season. So I played two seasons. I just had started to take its toll on me. And then there was the the fact that over in Honkers, there's the Astro turf everywhere, mm-hmm. and I ended up getting osteitis pubis, and ugh, look, I. I I had some for those that game. aren't doctors, for those hey. that aren't doctors, that's for those that aren't doctors on the show. That's large pubes. Sorry, carry on. That's yeah, that's osteitis pubis. So I'm just going to do a piss. Um, actually, I probably shouldn't bring my iPad in there. Yeah, um, that's all right. Are you are you good to hang on a sec? Yeah, I've got time. It's only four thirty. <laughs> Sorry, man. Oh, the, the annoying thing with this is I'm going to have to edit this out. Good work. <laughs> oh, Kira, fuck no, Ca- caramel. Caramel Cambry. Oh, oh, Kira's just sent me something. What is um, it? Uh, Cat, Cadbury Caramel Ice Cream. Oh, <laughs> fuck so, me. What are we it's talking about? It's a constant about? battle. Um, Man, golf, yeah. golf. Golf. Um, oh, fuck no, 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 no. Hong Kong. But no, what are your plans for lockdown? Um, I'm going to try and earn some money somehow. Um, I'm going to do some more podcasts. I got one with the Waratahs. Uh, what would you call him? He was the interim head coach on Thursday, um, Jason Gilmore. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm going to do some coaching, and yep. I'm going to I'm going to try and uh, start work on a couple of these ideas that I had. And I'm also I've been trying to stay at the piss. That hasn't worked very well. And I'm going to try. I've been going to the gym every day. I've been training. I've been walking. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to try yeah, and make the yeah. most of it. You know, you, you, you're now older, fatter, and married. Tell me about those 6.30 walks. Um, well, it was, no, it has been That's 6.30. Kate. Kate, Kate asked me to ask that one. I wanted to throw that in there. About the 6.30 walks. Tell me about them. <laughs> Tell me about the 6.30 walks. I mean... Mate, we live in fucking Cronulla, which is one of the best fucking places on earth. I don't understand why people have this bad uh, view of it. Uh, it's fucking beautiful. And I, even, I on a, even on a shit day like today, it's the fucking best. Um, you know, I, I, we, I and you, we, are, we have so much technology around us. We use our phones. There's all this bullshit. There's something very okay. nice about just getting out in the in nature and and just fucking walking and enjoying yourself. Yeah. Mate. No, I fucking, agree with you. You know, fuck. There's like um, dolphins and people surfing and living and 
have a nice coffee and mate, it's great. It's great. No, none of that. Ex- none of that exists here. They're tall man made. Um, well, that's kind of, that's pretty yeah. much why I went on about it a little bit because I knew that um, you know you don't get that. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate that. That leads me into my next question. Go on. I want to. I live in a country that bans chewing gum. <laughs> why, do so they do that? About, why do they do that by the way this better not have a big following in singapore or i'll get deported oh no don't don't say it again no don't say it. Oh, no don't say it. I, the, the, off, offline i can tell you but why do they do it because it's a beautifully clean country that's perfectly manicured and well kept um, yeah. kind of like my kind of like my beard it's maintained very well um <laughs> And they don't want gum everywhere and all that shit, which is fair enough. Oh, people are scum, so that's fair. Oh, they are. They are. Um, anyway, caffeine gum. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so how did I have when I played for Melbourne in the NRC? They were handing out this caffeine gum, and I was a bit dubious about it. But we played this mm. game on a we played this game on a Thursday night, so we left Melbourne because the AIU are the tightest human beings to ever walk the face of the earth. Um, when it comes to everyone but themselves. So we flew out of Melbourne at 6 a.m. on a Thursday morning and we had a 7.30 p.m. game at, Brook, at Brookvale that night. Well, actually, it might have been Manly Open. Whatever. So I was fucked. And um, one of the s c guys gave me this little blue chewing gum tablet and I had it and I've gone, honestly, mate, woo! You know, fucking like being asleep to being awake, similar to other things that you regularly partake in when you're not in Singapore or Asia. Um, and I was hooked. And so for every game after that, I'd have one for the game. I'd have one for the game. I'd So I'd take three. I'd have one for the game, one for the piss up that night, and one for the hangover the next morning. And honestly, it's better on the piss than it is for footy. Um, so, so I'd totally forgotten about it until last year where uh, – where Todd put something on the group about an eBay thing and I've gone, all right, you know, might try and see if I can get some. And I got some and, you know, sold 500 bucks worth in a, I bought 500 bucks and it's sold out in like three days. So I thought, oh, I'm onto something. And yeah, mate, I've, since then I've sold stuff to G- GWS Giants. Um, a lot of Shoot Shield guys do it. A lot of Super Rugby guys do it. It's just something that's tipping away. People are people are starting to see it a bit more, mate. Yeah, it's more of a more of a hustle. I'm trying to get it into like a little, you know, more of a, a mainstream thing, but just hustling away, mate. You know, hustling. One of the I many can't. hustles. I can't wait. I can't wait to try it. Um, oh, you'd love that shit. Yeah, not another addiction I don't need. Um, Hit me with some questions. I, Is that all you I've, have? I've got a few. No, 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 no. I've got a few more. I'm just trying to work out the best approach. Um, you know, you, you sort of said your only real goal was Italy. So yeah. you're telling me out of all of your achievements, which is actually, if whoever knows your rugby CV, it's, it's not fucking shabby, that your only real goal was to go and travel to Italy to eat pizza and get fired via, via Google Translate. Yes. Seriously. Yes. Or, oh, no, like... You can you can deep on me here. No, I, I I wanted to win a shoot shield as a player. Got close a couple of times. I, I honestly could not imagine anything as good. As re, re, remember that one. I still have it from when I fuck. I should watch it one day. But that, you know, even though we lost that game you know, against Eastwood, it's still one of the best week, couple of weeks in year of my life, man. And I just I'd really like to win a shoot shield. Um. But in terms of my playing career, like I always thought I wanted to be professional. I had a couple of stints at it. And, you know, when I was at Melbourne, I saw I saw a whole heap of things that I'm like, you know, I think I was 30 at the time. And I'm looking at it and going, this is pretty fucked, to be honest with you. Well, Some of the past, stuff. Well, well, <laughs> well past it by then. Oh, no, it was like I kind of hate, hate bullshit. And I would ask people questions that I knew they didn't know the answer to just to see what they said because I knew they didn't know the answer. And the fact that they had the fact that they had this job that they valued um, 
meant that they had to give you an answer and just some of the bullshit I saw, mate. It made me not to, want to. It made me not want to. To me, it. to me, the big thing I noticed, obviously, when I was sort of floating around with the Hong Kong stuff, is the subject, the subjective nature of it all. You know, you, you can be told that, oh, your stats weren't good enough, but then you, 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 you hit 30 reps, you made 20 tackles, and you carried the ball 15 times. What do you want out of that? Yeah. You know, and, 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 okay, I went and had 10 beers the night before, but I still <laughs> turned up the next day and played. Yeah. And it's, I, I played the back end of my career always knowing that it's my decision to play well. I can get as involved as I want. And look, Hong Kong first grade's not shoot shield, but it wasn't shabby. Yeah. And you saw my last, you saw my last test matches. You make a decision to play good, you get yourself involved, and it goes from there. But the subjective bullshit of it. Uh, do you know what your just... problem was? Do you know what your problem was? And I, I now understand it being a coach, is that you are a maverick. So you you are a team guy, but you are also your own mm. person. And and a lot of people struggle to deal with people like you. You know, like you, we mm. joke about it, but your trainer called you the Dennis Rodman of Hong Kong rugby. And it made it's fucking <laughs> it, but it's fucking true, bro. It is true. Um, you're a little left of center. And for, for for me, what that shows is probably a lack of understanding from the coaches about how to get the most out of someone. I mean, all you ever really wanted was someone to go, fuck you, playing well. We fucking value you. Like, you're a valued member of this team and we love what you're doing. And you would have done anything for anyone. But you're, you're your own person and people struggle with that a bit. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I've, I've reflected on that. I, I'd agree with that. And it didn't but do you know fault, fit well in. Do you know whose fault, fault that is? It's the coach's no. fault. It's a coach's fault. Yeah, it just didn't happen. It, it was not the Hong Kong way. It was very... But that's bullshit. Yeah. A, I, good, I agree with you. I agree a, with good you. Coach, a good coach would have got the most out of you. Because you could play rugby. Anyone that play, ever played with you or saw you play would have gone, oh, this guy's, this guy's got some, you know, he's not powerful or big or strong, or skillful or fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <He's>, mum. Thanks. <laughs> but but he can play a little bit, but he's just a little bit of a fucking, you know, he's a bit of a fucking weirdo. But and and I I I think of weirdo as being a good thing because I I like weirdos and I think I am a bit of a weirdo. Um, but a good coach would have got the most out of you. That's that's what I have learned. Yes. Was there any stage in your career where you were only playing for money? No, nah. no, nah, it's too hard. It's too hard, mate. I, I well, that's not true. Italy, Italy was for money, but but it, it kind of showed in how I played. Like even in even in my working life, I've never been able to do anything just for a paycheck. And you know, I, I've had jobs where I've had some really good money, and I fucking yeah. hated it. I fucking hated it and I just couldn't bring myself to, you know, I just, I just, the money's never been worth it for me. I'd rather do something that I believe in and that I, I am proud of. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. I know you, I know you, ask. It's, you I, did I, it I, my back end, my back end, I put back last two years, I just played for money um, and it got to the stage where I didn't need it. And it was, uh, it was becoming a chore and, for a yeah. game that's given me everything to turn up on a Saturday and to put my body at risk. And as you've seen, I did it all the fucking time yeah. uh, to, to for, for, I think it was like 600 bucks Aussie a game at the end of it. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a nice Saturday night's booze money. Um, it, but, but see, the thing with me is that anything that I've ever done only for money, I've never lasted long at. You know, I, I have to care about it. I have to believe in it. I, I, it has to be a reflection of me. Uh, I have to like the people. I have to like the place. I, I, you know what I mean? And, yes, you have to do things for money. I, I do spend the last fucking four months doing something that I hated for money because I had to. And I you just cut really, this out. I've, I've, been, I've been doing it for 12 years. Don't just cut that out. I'm not cutting that. That's not being cut out. 
Um, but yeah, whatever they want. Anything, anything you do just for money, in my view, is well for me anyway. It's not something I can give my best at. If that makes any sense at all. No, that that really does. That really does. It's it's an interesting one. Um, but post rugby, what what is your goals? With we know wandering bears moving. Yeah. Any sort of other sporting ventures that you're going to take up? Any other avenues that you're looking at? Cage um, glasses. Oh, I actually got some glasses here as well. Or do I? No. Um, uh, rugby takes coaching takes up a lot of time. Um, yeah. Which is good. I'm I'm enjoying it and I'm learning a lot. Uh, yeah, that's probably the thing I struggled with the most is is having a lack of purpose because rugby you know whether you are a high level rugby player or a club rugby player it still has it still gives you a bit of purpose um so i guess i'm still trying to find out what that is coaching's definitely helped the transition i, I always wanted to be a coach I, I was kind of looking at it for a few years before it actually happened um but in terms of sports oh. man i you know now i'm not working if i can keep this going i'll once the lockdown's over, I'll get back into jiu-jitsu and kickboxing. And I don't know. Just I really, I'm, the only thing I really want to do is make the most of my potential. And whatever that is, I don't know. And what that looks like, I don't know. But I'd, I'd like to just explore it and learn and keep getting better and getting fitter and doing fun things and having fun with my friends and, you know, building this business. And I don't know what, I don't know what it looks like. And I don't know how it's going to end up, but I know I'm on the right path. What does success mean to you? What is success? What is that's your definition easy, of success? That's an easy question. It's, it's getting up every day and spending my time how I see fit and choosing to spend my time the way I want to spend it. You know, uh, obviously you got to work. I'd like to get up and do things that I like. For work, I'd like to exercise, I'd like to be with my friends, I'd like to do nice things. But it's the basic definition of me is having the ability to choose how I spend my time. That's, that's a good way to put it. You know, I, I listen to your Todd podcast. Mm. And, you know, I, I, one thing I'm getting from a lot of coaches is they are unique mentally and they, they think in a different <laughs> they, That's they, a nice they, way of saying it. They're fucking nuts. Let's put yeah. it. Let's put it frankly. And you know, he gave you a pretty big compliment about your transition from um, play to coach. Did you have any sort of doubt doubts about transitioning? Was there ever any stage where you were just going to walk away? Um, if I can honest, hopefully he won't listen to this. He probably won't listen to this. But if he wasn't coaching at the club, I would have had. I always wanted to coach and I would have eventually got into coaching, but I, I would have had a year off if he wasn't there. I would have just gone and lived and, and done stuff. But the, the learning curve, the, the things I've learned this year, I've got to start writing it all down so I can remember it. I've been but, telling you to do that for, I've been telling you to do that for a while. <sighs> I'm such a scatterbrain. But, yeah, my doubts definitely, you know, I've played with a lot of these guys, how they're going to respond to me. Uh, you know, there's been times over the last couple of years where uh, some coaches have, have kind of lost the group and I, I, I couldn't imagine anything worse at a place that I played and at a place that I love. Um, you know, people are saying nice things. I, I, I have no idea how I'm going. Uh, yeah, doubts, definitely, definitely. But, um, mate, doubts at everything. Doubts in everything I've ever done, so... Yeah, yeah, there was definitely down. Kira's getting you another beer. <laughs> she knows her place. <laughs> yeah, mate, I, I, okay. I don't know how to, I don't know how to better answer the question. Yes, oh, I've definitely had doubts, but I've probably exceeded my own expectations. But you didn't have any expectations, so how do you have Well, well that's right, so I've... Well, yeah, yeah, mate. Good point. It's it's good, it's, it's conceptualized. It's it's so weird. I fuck. I wish I could smoke weed here. Oh god, it's so weird because you. It's that balance of living in the moment, looking yeah. ahead, 
but fucking really enjoying the moment, but not enjoying the moment one or two bottles of wine too much. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. And, and it's that's been my life like, struggle. Oh. That's been the struggle of did, my did life. I ever, did I ever tell you about the time I um I got put on the field with about 12 minutes to go against Korea and we were getting fucked up in the scrum. Shit wasn't going great. And I, I went came on, shorted up a bit sort of linked a few things together we won the game i went out and did what locked does that night in korea you know the korean barbecue and you know, so do yeah, yeah 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 and then the next morning all the pro athletes were there so that was as it was transitioning from pro amateur to pro i was amateur and all the pro athletes were getting a ribbing and i'm sitting there trying to listen to some of the dullest welsh fucks i've ever heard not welsh sorry scottish um hall Andy Hall, I, one coach I could never stand. I liked him as a human, could never stand him. But I, And he gave me the one and only compliment for the day in the briefing. And it's like, I smelt like booze. I think I vomited for one of the rare times that morning. Yeah. No expectations. I never thought I'd play 10, 10 tests. Yeah. Uh, I moved to Hong Kong to play 10 tests. I gave up. I, the moment I gave up, I got the call to go to Tokyo. Yeah. Literally, the moment I said I'm never going to make it, I got the call to go to Tokyo. It was just, you know, and then it's just imagine if I actually exercised. <laughs> and it, it's it's funny. It's funny how life works sometimes. Like, you know, when you're finally ready to. When you stop giving a fuck, it seems to be the moment where a lot of things happen. Yeah, I stop get I stop giving a fuck, and it all it all happened that day. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, funny. I, I wish I was like that a bit with my rugby career, but I kind of don't because I think I think I'm probably going to be a better case than I was a player. And, you know, I, I've I've kind of seen every way that you shouldn't become a professional rugby player, and a lot of the ways you should. So, yeah, you um. You made a good comment earlier about uh, coaches continually keeping educated. Any yeah. plans for you on, on that front? Um, mate, every day I learn something. Every day I learn something new. I, th I think, you know, one of the problems... <sighs> okay, so I applied for this job with a governing body of a sporting organisation and all the requirements for the job, I was perfect for Absolutely perfect for you. Couldn't have written it better. Fat, fat, dumb, terrible beard, hairy, overweight. Yeah, anyway, carry on. But, but the thing that I didn't have was the university degree. And I think people give too much of a fuck about that formal education and not enough about what the person's actually done. And like I'd done all the stuff that they wanted. Yeah. And I, it's, you know, oh, your resume is fantastic, but we need someone with a degree. They go, it's such a stupid old way of looking at it. If someone's good enough, they're good enough. Um, you know, so in terms of in terms of educating myself on coaching, mate, I, I learn every fucking day. Honestly, some of the conversations I have, some of the people I get to talk to, some of the things I see, you know, in terms of formal education, do you know, I, I can't get qualified as a coach in this country until October. Really? I don't have any level two courses until October. It's funny, it, you know, the whole... That the, is funny, isn't it? Thing, it's ridiculous. The whole degree thing is backwards. You know, I, I would never have got an opportunity if I needed the degree. Luckily, we yeah. were born in Hong Kong and I could play footy. But by the time I ended up getting the degree, no one gives a fuck. No. You know? It's like, oh, you've been doing this for how long? It's a, a, a degree is a credibility indicator. So, oh, you know, he has the ability to stick at something. Oh, he's got a degree, you know, and then it's up to what you can do to get you, to keep you, the degree gets you in the door, what you can do keeps you in the door. But what if you can already do what should keep you in the door anyway? You know what I mean? I, I just it, think... It, it, comes to, it comes back to open-mindedness of the people that you're working with. And, you know, I've listened, I obviously told Swan, yeah. Um, I, I've been around. I've been around Souths now and again over the years, and that there, there is a level of open-mindedness, I would say, and sort of well, it's, respect it's a great, and sort of 
Well, there is and there isn't. It's um, well, that's that's why I sort of I was about to say. Uh, it, sort of, you know, uh, the growth mindset. Growth mindset. Is, growth mindset is the way to look at it. I mean, there's a lot of people, and, and I think coaching really shines a light on human beings and and the ones that seem to be successful. Uh, the ones with the growth mindset who would, you know, I've started listening to this book, Atomic Habits, which I recommend you get. And it's all about little habits to, you know, over the course of a time, over the little habits over a period of time to get to where you want to go. And rather than focusing on the goal, saying, hey, Locke wants to be, you know, the, the world's most famous food critic, they go, okay, well, how do you become the world's best food critic? All right. We've got to review lots of content. We've got to produce lots of content. We've got to be unique. We've got to write. We've got to do YouTube. We've got to vlog. We've got to be on Instagram. And then you go, okay, so that's the kind of person that does that. So then your actions have to, to match that. So you've got to be – so instead of being uh, driven by the goal, you're driven by the process of it. Does that make sense? So if yeah. I want to be an entrepreneur, yeah. entrepreneurs get up at 5 a.m., work out in the morning, they're organised, uh, you know, a lot of the things that I'm not. Um, so that's how, instead of going, oh, I want to be a multi-million dollar entrepreneur, that's the goal, then you got to go, okay, well, how do I get there? And then you start ticking those little things off. So good book. I'm, I've only a couple of chapters in, so I'm probably giving a very uh, three beers uh, brief understanding of it, but... That's right. Well worth a listen to and on growth mindset, I think a lot of the people that have that growth mindset seem to be successful. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Hey, um, what's your biggest regrets? And you, you, you can't say getting married two weeks ago. It's only been two weeks. No, you know what? It was actually good. I actually uh, enjoyed the hell out of it. I didn't think I love the family I... photo. That was good. <laughs> it's good of you to dress up. I, I didn't think I'd enjoy that as much as I did enjoy it, but it, it really was fucking awesome. Um, the weather, everything was great about it. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't regret anything. I wish I'd worked harder. That's probably my biggest thing, is that I, I had the ability to do... You know, I, I don't regret anything. I had more fun almost than anyone alive apart from yourself. I could say that. And I think what I've learned from my mistakes will carry me through to the next part. Because if you every sure. every mistake I've ever made has kind of had something good come off the back of it. Mm -hmm. You are the luckiest person I know, to be honest with you. you know, yeah. Every time something's gone to shit, you bounce back absolutely whether it was a, a, whether it was a, a you know you left Italy you got home dollars and you ended up on a, a decent paying job to get you going again or you you just sort of you've always landed on your feet which I think is a testament to uh, you know how you go about things mm -hmm. um and that's the only compliment you're getting this hour oh. podcast <laughs> I might add um, We're gonna, I'm gonna fucking screen record that and put it on online for uh you can, you can do what you want. You know, it's, it's, it's fucking interesting. You know, what you've done with the podcast, I, it's, you're, you're opening that thing up to the young up-and-coming rugby player, the old head, the guys that are playing club, whatever. You got just talking to top-level guys. Like, I was intrigued to what Jed said, Hoop said, Kieran Reid said. Yeah. I, I, I'm enjoying the coaching podcast a lot more because I – Full disclosure, I don't watch rugby anymore. I, I don't, I, Australian rugby can fuck off as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, I reckon the tests will be abandoned this week too with the latest announcements today. But I that, uh... you're opening up an avenue to people that don't get to see it. And it, it's just a different aspect, a different story. And storytelling and content to me is king. So it's, it's, um... it's, it's I, I think I can do better. Uh, you know, I think I've just hit like 22,000 downloads across all the platforms. I've got, I've got very little social media following, really. Um, I, I, you know, yeah, it's good, but I, I think there's more there. 
um, you know, I, I keep saying this. I was talking to Benny Alexander the other week and, um, you know, he said to me that I, I, I could tell that he's on the right path because of how he spoke about what he's doing. And I don't know where this is going to end up, but I am convinced that I'm on the right path. And the trick for me is to just work out how to get to that end destination of whatever this is going to be. I don't think this current, I don't think this current current iteration of what I'm doing is the end is the end. I think this is just yeah. the start of it. If that makes sense, I think I keep saying this, but does that make any sense at all? It, it circles back to what you said earlier on. That it's all about the journey, and if you enjoy the journey, the end, whatever it is, will be whatever it is. Yeah. As long as you enjoy the process between x to y to z yeah it's all good you know, Mate, it's, people, people, i would just say to anyone listening like run, running your own business and starting something you know creating something out of nothing is fucking hard bro and you have days where you just doubt yourself so fucking much like oh, i was i've been down as dog shit today like you know i haven't got much work coming in i'm yeah, I'm going to be okay, but you know, it's just that uncertainty with COVID, and oh, this is hard. And why isn't my social media getting the following? And uh, so you got to be able to live with that. But you know, I'm, I'm ticking. Some, I've been ticking some little goals that just make it feel good, make it feel worthwhile. And yeah, it's doing your own. Th- I can nothing wrong with anyone that has a job. Uh, full respect. <laughs> Apart from you, anyone anyone that can do that, full respect, all the respect in the world for. I can't do it, so I have to do this. I have to do. I have to pursue something like this, and it, it's way harder than than anything else. And you, you've got to be able to deal with that. Yeah, I, I have three more questions on my list, and I'm going to keep firing them at you because I don't want to do any more work today. No, good, good. <laughs> um, where will Wandering Bear be in five years? I don't know. Is the is the right answer? I hope some of the things that I'm working on. Well, I know some of the things I'm working on will be uh, very prominent, but I I kind of see this as uh, you know keep saying the journey and the process and all that sort of stuff. The wandering bear for me is going to be the process of me working out what this is supposed to be and sharing that with people. And then hopefully I'm a good further away along the journey than I am now. I think I will be. Um, But in terms of what it's going to look like, fuck knows, bro. Could be anything. That's that's pretty cool. Um, Yeah, one question I really like in a lot of your podcasts that you've done and is, you know, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Oh, well, that's an easy one. Start now. Start now. You were right. How, how, did, how, did, how did I know that was going to happen? <laughs> start I, now. Start. You are you are right and you can do it. Uh, if someone else can do it, you can also do it. Start now. Start now. Start now. What's the best, what's the best book you've ever written? Uh, ever written? Ever, ever read? Ever read it. Um, oh, fucking. That's okay. Three beers deep, too. But what, what's the best book you've read? I like the Wolf of Wall Street's book. <laughs> books, actually. I like, I like his books. I, I, I don't know. Um, I like all sorts of books. I like Shantaram about the guy that escaped prison and ended up in India yeah, living you, in the slums. You know me, I'm not that sort of book guy. I, Sort of, yeah. I use them as kindling. Um, best book I've ever read was Shantra. Yeah, book. great fucking book. Yeah. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street books are actually better than the movies, uh, better than the movie. Um, I like Anthony Kiedis, The Red Hot Chili Peppers autobiography, Scar Tissue. Yeah, uh, that's a good book. Uh, I'm just rattling. I, I loved all the Harry Potter books. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd, that sort of stuff. Um, I like the Hunger Games. 
Man, I'm just, I, I haven't read a lot lately. I've, I, I've I read David Goggins' book. It's not one of the best books I've ever read, but it's a good fucking book. What does David What does David Goggins stand for? You know, I, I love his stuff. I think he's a head case, but I, you know, I like those guys. He's a head case, and I, I don't necessarily. He's just a he's just a hard cunt that worked out how to get the most out of himself, and I don't know if his way of doing it is the way for me. But there's a lot in that. There's a lot in that. You can't. You can't do chin ups. <laughs> I'm too fat. I'm too fucking Maybe, fat. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> oh, I could yeah. probably do one, one or two, but no, that. Um, yeah, I can't think of any. If I'd have prepared, I would have given you some good answers. I like Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week, Sorry. but probably Shantara and Harry Potter. They're, they're books I've read more than once, mate. No, uh, Shantara. Rogue yeah. motherfucker who did it his own way. Like, oh, what amazing. a story, you know? It's, I think that's what you're doing with Wandering Bear, just taking whatever this is and conceptualizing it in a direction that you're content to go down. And I. Well, esca- escaping I'd, prison, you know, escaping prison to live in the slums. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. I left Hong Kong, moved to the slums of Singapore. No, um, yeah. no, it's 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 working for yourself. It's you know, I I I can see the the continual anxiety that comes with that, and you know, it's it's finding that level of going time to walk away, or it's just too good to stay. And, uh, I, you know, for, for you, I could see, I, I was telling you all along, get out of where you were to get into something else. Um, but, yeah. Mum, uh, are sense. you boys, mum, mum, are you boys doing your thing tonight? Go away. Yeah. Yes, yes, mum. Go away. Go um, away. But, mate, it's, it's, it's like, you know, you know, even with all the stuff, like I'm, I've gotten a lot of confidence from what I'm doing, but, you know, I had, a, I was having a couple of beers with Jason Gilmore last Friday at the lunch that I was emceeing at where I interviewed him. And I was still fucking nervous about asking him to do a podcast. I, I, I want to start a vlog. I've been fucking nervous about doing it. i got to fucking do it because if you want to be in media, you got to put yourself out there. And Have you read like, the subtle art of not giving a fuck? Yeah, I have. I've probably got to read it again. And, and it's that, mate. It's, it's going, you know, I was nervous about doing a podcast. Like, you know, if no one listens to it, who gives a fuck at the end of the day? I get to talk to good people. But I was I was nervous about it, and it was unbelievably well received. I was nervous about calling my business Wandering Bear because I thought people would make fun of me. Unbelievably well received. Did, you know what I mean? I, but it's, 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 it's not giving a fuck. Well, and, but it's, choose your it's, fucks. It's choose your fuck fucks. It's, yes, that's it. It's choose choose your fucks. the fucks to give. Like I was saying to Cal, like Cal was saying something to me, and I've gone, but but you're a complete fucking idiot. Why would you ever listen to anything you had to say about anything? And I'm I'm like that as well. Like why, you know? Oh, you're nervous about this. Well, why would I listen to me? <laughs> Do you know I mean? You've um, you hit so a book that I've been reading. I've read quite a lot and reread again. It's um, Principles by Ray Dalio, the biggest hedge fund. I've got to read that. Planet. Yeah. And it's, put, it's putting other people's viewpoints through your own filters of your values, what things mean to you, and go, does that work? Is mm-hmm. that something that you could use and agree with? And if so, try it, but adapt it to you. And yeah. It's fuck. It's interesting. In the end, we all die anyway. So make sure you eat well tonight. Well, that's you know, it's, that's it, mate. That's like you know. Oh, I was going to have two weeks off the piss, but I get to have a beer with my brother tonight. So why why would I do that? You know what I mean? But but like the benefits to my health would probably be good. But honestly, I'd rather have a beer with my brother. <laughs> you know, and I've lived my whole life like that. And it's probably why I haven't really achieved anything. Um, that's uh, but you have you have you, you sound you sound you sound a lot like dad so you know, i was trying to drum into this idea did he send you his photos of his place today no so I, I messaged him yesterday about some sort of thing i need to get his address to get kira visa sorted um 
his place is fucking classy. He's yeah. finally evicted that degenerate drug addict. He's renovated his flat. <laughs> it looks great. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm, I'm poor. But fuck, you're living a good life in a fucking surf retreat town with a hundred meter walk to the middle of a beach of no fuck, a good coffee shop and a gym across the road. Like yeah, you know, it comes you back know, to what your values are and what's important to you. Yeah, you don't you don't need much, mate. The the last COVID lockdown we had, the thing that I learned is that oh, you don't actually need that much money to live. And um, you know, it's part of the part of the, the really good things on life are uh, your friends, your people you enjoy and I can live it living in a nice place and simple things like a nice lunch or you know, good coffee and you know, you don't actually need much. But I want I want a lot though. Yeah, I guess you know that's that's a pro- probably you know I got, I got one more question. Go go um, for it. A... You've done a good job, by the way. I'm I'm good at this. I'm not, I'm actually ho- hosting a um, work one tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. I definitely won't be listening to that one. I wouldn't either. It's, it's a niche market. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can find it anyway. Um, if you could choose the way you're going to die, how would you go out? Oh. I know how I'd go out. I would like to go out in a gun battle, a shoot, a gun battle shootout in a in an old, no, like a surfy sort of country town in the main street of town. There's like helicopters around, but it's it's like old school Western style, you know, pistols, not machine guns or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's probably how I'd like to die. What about you? Have you? Have you ever been to Colant? Have you ever been to Colanta, Thailand? No. So it's an island in Thailand that sort of turns a blind eye to weed, and you can get joints about that big there for like five Aussie. So I would like to go out there with my own bar with an unlimited supply of Leo beer, yeah. my own Thai chef that cooks good food, and Just enough marijuana. To Enough marijuana to smoke myself up into space. But you can't uh, die doing. Do I don't think you can die doing that. So you, you'd no. Probably... The, the, the Leo, the Leo beer would probably get me there at some stage. Oh, you'd um, want to die it, it, either that or was, I was going to say like eating and drinking yourself to death because at least it'd be fucking fun. You know? What move? Well, that's what I mean. Thai food, my favorite food. Leo yeah. beer, my favorite beer, and weed to make me hungrier. It would be fucking fun. And on one of the nicest places I've ever been. Beautiful. Um, anyway, it's been good. Um, you, you're on a good thing here, I think. I really do. And I think I am too. I just got to get it out to more people. Ho- hopefully me talking shit won't ruin it, but I don't know. I think, I think it can only, yeah. I think it can only expand it. It's, it's who, the whole point I thought about this was who the fuck are you? You know, yeah, the, besides people who know you from rugby circles and word of mouth, yeah. it's just, it's, it's fucking weird. It's self-marketing and it's not something we've been, I'm not very good at that. Very well. no. We haven't been taught to do very well. Putting like, yourself out there is fucking terrifying uh, for me, and I'm sure it is, even though you do ridiculous things all the time, it's still terrifying for you. And uh, having to overcome that a bit to do something like this has been very good for me. Um, but I, I got, hey, there's more in me, mate. There's more in me, I reckon. It's, have you set up your studio yet? No. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't delay it. It's it's um and the, the, the cold brew business is something that I, I want in on. Yeah, yeah. That's how it's up tomorrow. Think it, I think it needs to be I think it needs to be a subscription based delivery business. So or I don't know, yeah. and we can drag Linda on with it or not. I know no, you're thinking of her, but you need to you need to fucking set it properly. And yeah, then yeah. we can work out how to fraction her in because you can't she'll do it all. To she actually is one of the few people that listens to these podcasts, and she'll listen. I, to I was hoping you, I, I was hoping you'd cut this last bit out. But... Absolutely not cutting this last bit out. <laughs> but yes, we're we're looking at starting a cold brew business uh, for anyone interested. Talk to me. Uh, talk to me. You know, I haven't asked you this. How would I make somebody feeds lock the biggest food blog 
vlog business in the world? Mate, I think How could blog, I be the next board out? I think, I think blogging, you know, I've seen some, like Benny Alexander has been blogging. Palms has been doing blogging. I, can't, I really like his thing he's been doing because it's a bit different. I like Palms one as well. Yeah. yeah, you've been blogging. I've been blogging. Uh, there's a billion blogs in the world. There's, there's a, that's not the right number, but there's a significant amount of blogs. Um, with the amount of content around, it's, it's very hard to get ahead doing something like that. So I think you got to attack it with video. Uh, video seems the way to go. You're a bit of a different sort of character. Um, that's a nice way of saying it. And I think, I think attacking... Like, take people on the tour around Singapore of your food place. I would like to see that. I don't want to read you saying fuck and, you know, talking about food in, like, orgasmic tones, even though you do write very well. But what I want to see is you enjoying it in the setting. You know, that's what I want to see. So it, it's, it's, it's video. You're there. You're there yeah. in the moment. It's, you know, maybe that's, that's something that you, you sort of hit the nail on. It's, I still feel like a bit of a douchebag pulling out the full That's video set. 100%. Uh, bro, the it's, amount of times I've got my camera and yeah. goes, welcome to the Wandering Bear Sports vlog. The number one vlog in the world. You just feel like a fucking idiot. But um, I think you just got to put your, if you don't put yourself out there, you're never going to get to where you want to go. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I, you know, I, I, some of the food I eat here, though, it's just, it's hard not to. Yeah, you know, I wish I could send it by a mail or something to. I wish get you could you taste it. it. I, like the thing that really this. ruined me for bro is pizza, and like yeah, we can get decent pizza, but fuck, it's just not as it ruined it for me. Absolutely ruined it for me. And I know you went to a fucking crazy pizza place the other night, but uh, New York, New York was next level for me. Um, the, the the Italian style New York pizza. Mm. Um, and ever since that, I've been on a sort of a pizza obsession. Um, I can anyway, really you. let's let's end this thing. You have done a fantastic job, my friend. Uh, you have a career in broadcasting. If you would ever like to pursue it, I think you should pursue it. It's got to be, uh, you know, you're a curious person, and um, I think that's. If you ever need a co-host, if well, you ne- gonna... ever need a co-host, I can just sit there and sort of chime in. Well, I got some. It's, I got some ideas of some things I want to do. I want to start doing a weekly sports podcast. we do it like radio style, just yeah. to see how it goes. Um, I'm going to do start doing a preview show, review show. So once I get this all set up and and rolling, um, I think I'll do all that. But in the meantime, I got to work out how to make some money. If anyone's listening and they would like to partner, because it's not sponsor, it's partner with this podcast. Uh, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook and or, or, or LinkedIn feed, or any other or LinkedIn or and it's uh, somebody feed lock at Instagram the world's greatest food critic he drinks budgie he drinks beers in his budgie smugglers while he's jet skiing or water skiing or whatever the fuck it is wake surfing the wakeboarding coast. whatever it is yeah. skateboarding uh, he works in flying Somehow, yeah, yeah still has a career after trying to ruin it for the last twelve years. It's it's cra- it's crazy, isn't it? Honestly, I sort of I sit here going, "What the fuck am I doing?" It's honestly, and it's it's funny. Like, it, it is truly funny. Yeah, you know, it's we've done this for the last hour and a half. It's five thirty. I've had thirty emails come through during that time. <laughs> so, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, so now I'm just insanely busy. Just yeah. it's 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 ridiculous but no this 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 to me is fun well this thank you fun. thank We're, you for doing this mate you've done a good job and is katie, right. is katie c is katie c all right what's she up to she's all right she's uh enjoying her two weeks off she's enjoying her two weeks off hopefully it's only two fucking weeks dude fuck um six, six weeks six weeks was long yeah but you started a job the, that's the thing you know like it sucks i, I get I, but having it, if I if I had like that, you know, it, if I had a it, source it, of it, income, it, I'd be fine. It it didn't suck. I could travel the world via Deliveroo. I could walk every day. Well, it's I, exactly I, right. And you're safe. You're safe and all that sort of bullshit. Um, mm. Let's finish. Let, uh, well, uh, um, let me ask you. What would you t- what would you say to your eighteen year old self? 
<laughs> Fuck me. Didn't think I'd live this long. Uh, no. <laughs> well, that, that could be something. Have more fun. Stop giving a fuck earlier and just get after it. Do what makes you happy. Follow, follow, say yes. Say yes. I said yes to Hong Kong. Just say yes. Try things, fail, try again. Um, and don't give a fuck, you know. Don't conform to what people expect you to be. Be different. Um, and, you know, what am I now? 40, 42, 32. Um, you know, I... I I stopped caring about five years ago, four years ago. And so I just sort of, I'm in a position now where I could walk away from working. I could do what you're doing. I'm comfortable. I, no, it's, it's coming. It's coming in whether you broadcast this or not, I don't care. I, it's, the one thing COVID's taught me is to stop delaying life. And, you know, I, I feel like I've probably delayed it for quite a while of what I really wanted to do. I can work anywhere. Now, and I've proved this during the last 18 months of this bullshit. Yeah. And um, it, it's now time to go, this is what I'm going to do. And if you're not happy with it, I'll go do it myself. And own, own your outcomes. Own your fucking outcomes. You know? it's, no, it's no one else's fault for your fuck ups. It's your own fault. Um, way too serious. I, I prefer you should cut it off as I, I um surprised I lived this long. But it's, you know, it's wow. just own your outcomes. Fuck. It's, it's, oh. and, you know, don't put so much emphasis on chasing an egg around an astro turf field for some little pat on the back. You know, go for that extra pint of beer or 10. It's all bullshit. Let's finish on that, bro. It is all bullshit. Um, it is all bullshit. What's, what's um, your recording tomorrow or what are you doing? Thursday. Thursday. So that'll be good. He's a good bloke. Um, yeah, see how it goes, man. Let's do this again. Let's do this again. And um, no, so somebody feed lock on Instagram, followed me on Instagram, Dtub88 or Wandering Bear Sports uh, by Caffeine Gum. You know, all of the fucking above, bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's Friday, isn't it? It's Thursday. No, what's today? Fucking Tuesday. Man, I thought it was Thursday as well. You work for yourself, so you, you know, seven days a week. I, I sort of, I get lost in a, an abyss of lockdown. Uh, anyway, stay classy. Have a good one. Spend you too, time. mate. Thank you for doing this. This will. I'll try and put this up tomorrow. No problem. If I end up getting fired, I'll move in with you. <laughs> Definitely not. See, you, mate. Ha, <laughs> ha,